Hello everyone, welcome students to the next lecture on the topic organization of data under the subtopic collection of data and it is presented by Shantala Kulkarni, Department of Statistics, Kukripu, College of Commerce and Science, Belgavi. In the previous class, we dealt with the different types of measures used in what is secondary data, the sources of secondary data then from what are the different methods of primary data all that was dealt and in this today's class we will be seeing census enumeration and sample survey. Now what is census enumeration and sample survey we will just see. Information regarding an inquiry can be collected in two ways they are census enumeration and sample survey. Census enumeration a complete enum enumeration of each and every unit of the population is called census enumeration. For example, population census of India which will be conducted once in every 10 years is a census enumeration. So when you want to do uh, enumeration or a study of each and every unit when you go and collect information from each and every person that is known as census enumeration and that is done in our country once in every 10 years you all very well know that people come to our house collect every information even if our house is locked they will come back they'll do the follow-up they will come they'll collect the information and get the data let us see what are the merits of uh, census enumeration the results are more accurate and reliable uh, second the data are collected from each and every unit of the population third it provides a detailed study of all the units of the population fourth census method is free from sampling errors means sampling errors means the error which happen when you do sampling so that is not there in census enumeration let us see what are the demerits of census enumeration first one non sampling errors are likely to be more in census enumeration means the errors which do not happen in sampling that are known as non sampling errors that will happen in census enumeration Second, it requires more money, labor and time. Yeah, it requires more money because you have to go to each and every person uh, uh, and collect the information. Lot of time is required, lot of money is required, lot of people are involved in doing this task. Third, it is not possible in some circumstances where the universe is vast. Yeah, when sometimes, but yeah, in our country that's why it's done after every 10 years, but sometimes uh, uh, because if the area is too large, it becomes quite difficult. And the fourth one is while procuring the data, if the units are damaged, census enumeration is not suitable. So when you go to the person and if that person is not giving information or is not uh, revealing anything, so he there also census enumeration is not suitable. Let us see the next method sample survey. <clears throat> what is that? First we will see what is a sample. The representative unit, a part or a portion of a population is called sample. An enumeration based on a sample is called sample survey. The theory of sampling has been developed recently, but it's not new. In our day to day life, we've been using sampling theory without knowing about it. See, for example, yeah, what is the meaning of sample? You go to the market, you want to buy something, first you see the sample of that. Suppose you want to go and buy fruits, you want to go and buy vegetables, you want to buy food grains. What do you do? The first thing, see, you, you've been seeing this, even your mom, your dad, uh, your, we do that. You go and see a particular uh, grain, you want, to, you want to buy wheat, you want to buy rice, you go and put your hand and you take little quantity of that rice and you check. Okay, whether it is good or no. So when if it's good and then you tell the shopkeeper, yeah, I want this particular type of rice, you can pack it for me. So that is nothing but you're taking a little sample of it and then surveying it and then doing the next, next task. Sample survey also has also got its merits. Now, what are these merits we will see? The first one, uh, this method requires less labor, less time and is economical. True. Sample survey is more scientific, yeah. This method is applied for those units which are destructive in nature. Okay. Fourth one, sample survey is free from non-sampling errors. These are the merits. What are the demerits? Or what are the disadvantages? Sample survey requires adoption of appropriate sampling method and appropriate methods of analysis. If the population is too heterogeneous in nature, the use of sampling procedure is impossible. And the third one, sampling errors are part and parcel of sample survey. 
heterogeneous means it's not same it's different so if the data is very very different you cannot do a sample because you cannot come to any conclusion suppose if you are doing a sample survey means the data has to be of the same type heterogeneous means different totally different so these are the demerits of sample survey now before we begin the next next thing i have these two uh, definitions actually the sampling definition is already i mean what is a sample or what is sampling is already done it's been repeated once more pilot survey now what is this pilot survey a survey conducted before any general survey is called a pilot survey so what is the meaning of pilot survey suppose you want to, before you conduct a big survey you make a small survey and come if we have done that usually suppose you want to organize a birthday party you want to organize a wedding function so when you're doing your organize something or you want to book something or you want to do something you first go and make a small little survey and come and that small little survey only is known as pilot survey next sampling what is sampling the definition says that the process of extracting sample from the population is called sampling yes when you the process of extracting a sample from the population is called sampling there are three different methods of sampling the first one is known as a simple random sampling systematic sampling stratified sampling so we will see this uh, in detail what is simple random sampling what is systematic sampling and what is stratified sampling so there are three methods or three techniques for you all it is only three but in detail there is there are too many methods of uh, sampling so for pews even you're only studying these three methods and children this can be a question of uh, uh, two marks or maybe even uh, uh, five marks they may say mention the methods of sampling and explain any one of them briefly so these are simple questions you may have one mark question what is defined sampling defined census enumeration for two marks you may get uh, uh, write the merits and demerits of sample survey or census enumeration these are the things which you have to keep in your mind one more important thing children are very much bothered about the notes see notes these are all you can just pause and write down these notes the best thing what I'm suggesting is you all if you all have your textbook the notes are already available for you all and I have, we have been teaching and I am been teaching all from the textbook itself the best thing what you all can do is you can answer the questions which are there after the lesson so whatever questions are there whatever examples are there you can solve them and you can be perfect and that's the best thing instead of writing see already your notes are there in the textbook so you need not keep writing it and all that the best thing is to solve the questions uh, question and answers uh, you write on and uh, I mean it's a good check to test how much you have understood and how much you have known so that's the best thing that's my suggestion choice is yours we'll see what is simple uh, random sampling simple random sampling it is a technique where the sample is drawn in such a way that each and every unit of the population will have equal and independent chance of being included in the sample Several methods have been adopted for random selection of the sample. The most popular and simplest method is the lottery method. In this method, all the items of the population are numbered and then selected the required number of samples by drawing numbers. This lottery method can be used when the population is infinite. An alternative method is that of using the random number tables. See, what is a simple random sampling? I'll, I'll explain it in the most simplest way. See when a teacher comes in the class and if she's going to ask a question to you all i give this exam to, example to almost all my students whom i've been teaching for these many years so when i come to the class i'm going to ask a question to you all see that time when i'm going to ask a question to you all every child has got equal chance of being asked i will ask any child i want so such a method is known as simple random sampling everybody every child will be tensed uh, for which particular student uh, the teacher is going to ask the question so this method where each and every unit has got equal chance of being uh, taken this method is known as simple random sampling the next method is known as systematic sampling actually systematic sampling means you're following certain system you follow certain code for example you want to do a sampling uh, of certain numbers what will you do suppose you have a number 1 to 100 then you will make the arrangement in such a way that the number ending with 4 4 14 24 34 uh, 44 54 all these where it ends with 4 such a system when you apply it is known as systematic sampling so we will see it in detail how it is being done here 
Systematic sampling is a procedure of drawing samples by selecting equally separated units in a numerical, alphabetical or geographical arranged population. If we want to select a sample of n items from the population of capital N units, under this method the population will be divided into equally separated n, uh, n groups of k, each items, k items each, where k is equal to capital N divided by n, k is the sample interval, capital N is the population size, n is equal to sa sample size. One number will be selected between 1 and k by lottery method and let it be a. Then the sample units are like how we are giving the numbering a, then next is a plus k, then a plus 2k, so on till a plus n minus k. For example, if your number is 1000, your capital N is 1000 and n is equal to 100, then k is capital N divided by n, so that is 1000 divided by 100, it is 10. Now if you take a is equal to 5, you are going to substitute, then the sample units will be c. If you substitute the value of a is 5, 5 plus k is 10 that is uh, 15, then next is going to be 25, so on till 995 means here your systematic sampling will be in such a way that the first number is 5, then 15, then 25, so on till 995. So you are going to follow certain system. So when you follow certain system that is known as systematic sampling. The third one is known as a stratified sampling when this is used. When the population is heterogeneous or of different segments, then this method is applied. First, the population is divided into a number of subgroups called strata. Then each strata is homogeneous, each stratum is homogeneous. From each stratum, appropriate number of units are randomly selected. This method is called stratified sampling. Now, for example, let me give a simple example to you all. Uh, in our college, we have commerce, we have science students. And then I have to bifurcate between these commerce and science students. Then I'll change, uh, I'll segregate commerce students, then I'll change the science students and then in them I will make commerce students boys one group, commerce girls students one group. From that particular group or from that particular strata I will do the sampling. So if it is, the, the data is too mixed, it is not uh, uh, homogeneous, that time you will be using stratified uh, sampling by making simple strata or groups and uh, such a method is called as stratified sampling. This is another important aspect, difference between census enumeration and sample survey. You have to know the difference. Now census enumeration and remember children in the examination if they ask you uh, to write the difference, this is how you write the difference. You have to write the difference in two different uh, like you know make a, a line and census enumeration and sample survey and you have to show the difference distinctly. The first uh, difference is enumeration of each and every unit. Uh, of the population is called census enumeration and in sample survey enumeration of few re representative units of the population is called sample survey yeah census enumeration you are taking each and every unit sample you are taking only few of them second one non sampling errors are likely to be more in uh, sample survey sampling errors are more third in census enumeration this method is not scientific sample survey the method is more scientific fourth point the method is Impossible if the population is infinite. Yeah, census enumeration becomes difficult if the population is too, too, too huge. And sample survey, this method is more su suitable if the population is infinite. So even if the population is too, too large, you can just take uh, a sample, pick a small sample and do the survey. Fifth point, this method requires more money, time and labor. Yep, it's true. And fifth point, in sample survey, this method is economical. Yeah, you don't require that much effort, only sitting at a certain place you can come to the or you can make the survey or you can analyze. Sixth uh, point is in destructive cases this method cannot be used and same thing in destructive cases this method is on, this method is the only method which can be used. So these are the differences between census enumeration and sample survey. See when you are doing sampling there are some errors. 100% errors were bound to happen and what are those statistical error or we also call it as sampling errors which are those we will just find. Statistical error, what is a statistical error? It is the difference between the estimated value and the actual value. See you are estimating certain value and then you have an actual value. That difference is called as a statistical error or it is called as a sampling error. And there are three types, errors of origin, errors of inadequacy, error of manipulation we will see this one by one what is error of or or origin the first one 
the error that occurs due to improper definition of statistical units defective questionnaire and wrong method of inquiry is called error of origin error of origin means you don't have the proper definition uh, statistical units you don't have a defined uh, i mean a proper questionnaire then you are using a wrong method so errors will happen because of that and such error is known as errors of origin now the second one is error of inadequacy error that occurs due to incomplete data or insufficient data is called error of inadequacy so you don't have the complete information you don't have uh, all the, what is that required and error happens because of that also and that is known as error of inadequacy error of manipulation error of manipulation see manipulation means you are changing the things according to your need the error that occurs at the time of analysis clerical errors is called error of manipulation when um, it happens by the clerk uh, while recording while writing that error is called error of manipulation so there are basically three types of errors errors of origin errors of inadequacy error of manipulation and then there's one more biased and unbiased error biased means you are favoring unbiased means you are not favoring there are there are two classes of sampling errors they are biased errors and unbiased errors what is biased errors the error that occur with the notice of the investigator are called biased error they these errors are prejudiced errors me see the investigator knows that there is an error in spite of that he keeps quiet it is known as biased error unbiased error means the error that occurs without the notice of the investigator are called unbiased error means it happens without the knowledge of the investigator so that is unbiased he is not aware ho oh, the galti ho gayi to usko he doesn't know about it biased means he knows it is wrong in spite of that he keeps quiet that is known as biased error now there are measurement of errors means how to rectify uh, there are two types of measurements absolute error and relative error what is the definition absolute error is the arithmetic difference of the actual value and the estimated value means arithmetic difference means subtraction actual value means what is the actual answer and the estimated so absolute error is equal to actual value minus estimated value that is capital a e is equal to small a minus e second one is relative error it is the ratio of absolute error and the estimated value see ratio means it is in the form of numerator and denominator and that is the, you take the absolute error and the estimated value and you come to the conclusion this can be rectified rectified by two methods of uh, i mean uh, measurement of errors one is the absolute error and the relative error how you can measure the error are by these two methods so with this actually uh, i finish my topic organization of data children the met the best method is to follow first you see all the first chapter you uh, clearly watch all the videos of the first lesson make the notes if you are con uh, it's if it's comfortable for you all you'll write down or the best as i told you the best thing is to watch the video once or twice and if you have understood everything you you write the question answers which are there at the end of the lesson at the end of every lesson you have the question answers for one mark two marks five marks so you make a note on your own by uh, referring these notes i think that is the best option you will understand more uh, better and it will be more easy for you all and after you finish the first one you observe the second video and after you finish the second one you can you can come to the third after third you can come to the fourth so you go in that sequence only it will be more convenient for you all okay so with this i finish my uh, uh, lesson organization of data if any doubts are there please let me know thank you children